Hey there, Storm fans. Brian Cook here, and today we're playing the Epic Storm version 14.2. I've been running really hot with this deck list. In fact, I have 5 0 twice with it, as well as Jordan Kareem, who streams every single Thursday, usually the Epic Storm here on this very channel. So Jordan and I have both trophied twice. We're at a little bit of a trophy race, you could say, between the two of us. That's how good this deck list has been for us. I'm going to give an in-depth deck tech today of the deck list itself and sort of how I got here. But in order to understand this finished product, we need to go back to the last list that I published. Uh, and that was 14.1. This is what I played in the Legacy Showcase Finals with four copies of Abrupt Decay in the sideboard. And we ran a pair of Underground Seas and a pair of Taiga to support the Abrupt Decay. After I played this, I realized that four Abrupt Decay was kind of clunky. It just really wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted that effect versus eight cast, but it was just not really the mana value that I wanted. Like it just wasn't good enough against the rest of the format. So I started going back to an older mana base, like 13.5 here, where we have the Singleton mana base, but I was playing four Thought Seas in the sideboard. I played a lot of four Thought Seas lists but ultimately never ended up liking them. And that drove me to Jund. And this is the Jund list that I played. It was fine, but ultimately the lack of Brainstorm was very noticeable. It just really wasn't what I was looking for, even though the idea of Jund is nice, right? Like, oh, you get to drop a color, your mana base is more consistent. Well, when you're a Mox Opal deck, more colors actually doesn't hurt that much. Like this card really does a lot of heavy lifting. So going down to three colors just for a basic really wasn't what I was looking for. So ultimately, we landed on 14.2, where, actually, let's go back to the gen list real quick. One thing when we were building this deck list is I had three Chrome Mocks in it, and I began to realize there's 20 imprintables in our deck. So one third of our deck imprinted two Chrome Mocks, and it was cards we didn't want to imprint. Dark Ritual, Veil of Summer, Burning Wish, Real, like none of these cards you actually want to imprint. So... I said, well, what if we just don't play Chrome Mox? What if instead we play Urza's Bobble? So Urza's Bobble is similar to how we've been using Chrome Mox, which is just to enable Mox Opal, except you get a redraw. It is slightly worse in the faster matchups. I completely understand that. So, but you get a redraw, so you're better at drawing your Lion's Eye Diamonds, your Dark Rituals, your Veils, and your Galvanic Relays. You're just more consistent at drawing your good cards while enabling this to be a consistent turn one mana source. So that was really interesting. And I really fell in love during this time period with Biseju Who Endures. I dismissed it originally. If you go all the way back to the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty videos, you would have realized that I said the synergy with, or anti-synergy really, with Galvanic Relay was too much. We had to cut this card. At the time, we were trying to cut Abrupt Decay for it. That was the mistake we made. We should have been trying to cut Chain of Vapor. And when you pair Abrupt Decay with Biseju, it's actually quite powerful. And that's the combination we were looking for the whole time. We shouldn't have been trying to cut Abrupt Decay. It was Chain of Vapor that was the weak link. And now we have four answers to Chalice of the Void that are uncounterable. And that's sort of what I was looking to accomplish with the list that I played in the showcase. I just didn't figure out Biseju in time. All right. So now we've come back to 14.2. And we've decided to take what we learned in that Jun list and apply it to four color. No Chrome Mox. Instead, we're playing Urza's Bobble. There's only three of them. I wish there was room for four, but there just isn't. We have 12 lands. You could try going down to 11, but I don't recommend that. And if you want to cut something else, like you could like try pushing a Rite of Flame to the sideboard for Burning Wish, but then your relays get worse and we're the relay deck. You don't want to make your Galvanic relays worse. So ultimately, I think you're just supposed to accept playing three copies of Urza's Bobble and just keep on playing what we've been doing. But you'll notice in the sideboard, we have adopted two Besaiju, two Abrupt Decay, no Chain of Vapor, three Thoughtsies. You could play the fourth over Massacre, but I chose to play Massacre, and it's actually come up for me a few times already. Without Chromox in the deck, we're slightly, just slightly slower against decks like Death and Taxes or Maverick. And even though your Opals are enabled a little bit faster, that lack of speed, I think, means that we want something like Massacre. So we are playing this card. It could be the fourth thought season, the cyborg, but I think that this is ultimately what we want in that, uh, that slot. A lot of you have been asking about why Ave is still in the deck. It's mostly for the blue matchups. You board out either Echo Veons versus Control or Ad Nauseam versus Delver, and now you have a win condition in your deck or if they try to counterspell your Burning Wish and Surgical it. And on top of that, it's also just very, very, very good with Wishclaw Talisman, and that's the big reason to play the card. 
If you have any other thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions, whatever, put those down below. I am happy to answer those. Really, really excited about this deck list. I've been playing it so much recently. It's sort of revitalized my love for Legacy at the moment. That's how much I love this deck list. So really happy to discuss anything. There is a Cyborg guy. Today is May 1st. This Cyborg guy will be posted probably today, if I'm being completely honest, to our Patreon. So if you're looking for the Cyborg Guide, go join our Patreon. It will be in there. Um, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it, and I will see you in the first match. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsforum.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsforum.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Round number one, we're on the play. And our opponent, their goldfish history is exclusively mono black prison, which is a little bit concerning. But I think that this hand might be a keep. Our opponent's deck is a four Leyline of the Void deck with Karn the Great Creator, Opposition Agent, Shield Dread. So this hand might actually just be too slow. We'll try taking a mulligan. A little bit better. We'll keep this. Get rid of the... We'll get rid of the Rite of Flame. Play the Bobble, and then we will pass the turn. Okay, not Mono Black Prison. I am down for not Mono Black Prison. Looks like Depths. Okay. So I wish I would have kept the Rite of Flame over the Veil of Summer, but not the end of the world. We'll use the Bobble to target ourselves. Hoo boy! Keep, 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 keep! Draw! Draw for turn. Okay. So I believe we're a mana short of Ad Nauseam. We are, in fact. I'm going to choose to pass. So you could try to play out a Wish Claw now, but then your opponent can Wasteland you, or even main deck Prismatic Ending on your Wish Claw. And there's no reason to do that when we just need a single mana source. You could Echo, but once again, I don't think that's the line we want to take. Another Burning Wish, unfortunate. We'll pass the turn. We're not under any real pressure here. They grabbed a basic forest. Drop rotation. They grab flagstones. So this will put them up a land because they get a planes off of the flagstones plus a land off of the reclaimer. There's the land off of the flagstones. And now they get a land for Elvish reclaimer. They grab another flagstones. It's a great way of going up on lands. It's a really good value game. All right, they decide not to attack, and we have drawn the missing piece. This actually gives us enough mana to peer into the abyss. Dark Ritual. Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. Sacrifice for red. We'll hold priority. And we'll put Burning Wish right on the stack. Sacrifice for black. Sacrifice for black. And then we'll cast Peer into the Abyss, floating a single black mana. Okay. Select the peer, target ourselves. More than once on video, I have accidentally targeted my opponent. It's a black sorcery. Black sorceries are for targeting your opponent. You can't tell me otherwise. Okay, Lotus Petal. At this point, we just need to finish casting spells into Tendrils. Okay, and you might be wondering why I typically play out all my zeros. I've actually lost this matchup once because my opponent made a surprise merit lodge and then cast swords to plowshares. And I could have been it if I would have just played everything out. So you might think that you're showboating, but sometimes it's actually just the correct move to keep on playing stuff out. Okay. Firm is 16, we'll cast a brainstorm. Put back a few lands, another right of flame. Lotus petal. Burning wish. Storm is 20. We'll grab that tendrils. Target you. That's game one versus green white depths. In this matchup, I don't know if we actually want the abrupt decays. And then Veil of Summer can probably be sided out. It's fairly dead. We'll bring in our. Did I say abrupt decay? I feel like I did. We want to bring in abrupt decay. I don't know what I said about boarding it out, but we want to bring in abrupt decay, bring in our Besejus, and then Thought Seizes. Seven in, seven out. Easy peasy. Massacre is pretty huge in this matchup for 
a Burning Wish target because it kills a Green Sun Zenith for Collector Roof if they're on that package. This hand is so darn good. Keep, 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 keep once again. So we have Abrupt Decay for Collector Roof or Deafening Silence into just casual turn to Ad Nauseum. I love it. The only way that this hand could be better is if I drew a Lotus Petal and I didn't have to play in a Mind Break Trap on turn 2. It might be even correct to wait until turn 3 just so I don't play in a Mind Break Trap, depending on what our opponent does. Let's begin. Mox Diamond. Pitches Savannah into Yavimaya. Sylvan Library. They have one card in hand, but Sylvan's going to gain them quite a bit. The Seiju is a fine draw. Player Bobble. Past the turn, so it's worth noting our opponent was f6, so there's a good chance they don't have Mind Break. That said, Sylvan Library could quickly change that. Thespian Stage into Reclaimer with one card open. Interesting. Target ourselves. Wish Claw, we don't need that. We'll fetch. Grab Badlands, take a draw off the Bobble, draw for a turn. So I have Ad Nauseam on their turn. That plays through Mind Break. That's just the line here. I mean, it's unlikely that our opponent has the Mind Break Trap, but it's almost free to just not lose to it. Our opponent has gone to eight cards. They play a Plateau. Deafening Silence. I'm going to respond to this one. Dark Ritual. Turns out uh, you can't cast Dark Ritual with the red mana, so we'll tap for black. Dark Ritual. Tap this for green. Sacrifice the petal. Ad nauseum. Okay, so we want to not kill ourselves here. Plan A. Burning Wish, 13. Burning Wish, hers is Bobble. People like it when I pop this out. I personally don't find it very helpful, but I'll reveal it anyway. All the Bobbles in the world. Echo, I will stop there. Okay, so our opponent has Deafening Silence. We'll play the Taiga. Black, green. Abrupt Decay the Deafening Silence. Okay, so hypothetically our opponent could have a Lightning Bolt that would kill me if I thought sees them. But this deck is not a deck that usually plays Lightning Bolt, so I'm not going to respect that. Dark Ritual. I'll go to 3 Life and thought sees them. Force of Vigor. They see the writing on the wall. That's the match. We are 1-0. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number two, we're on the play. I don't know what our opponent's playing. I'm just going to keep this. I think it's good against an unknown. I faced them on a variety of different decks before. So I think that this just like does what we need it to. And I think I'm actually going to bobble now. So that way, if I draw Veil of Summer in case they're on a black deck, gamble. Ay, ay, ay. Um, so it could be lands. Or it could be the epic gamble. I'm going to pray for lands. We draw volcanic. It is not lands. Okay. Looks like we're going to be getting turn one tier. Yep. Not looking good for the home team. We need to hope that their new hand just is not very good. I mean, our new hand isn't very good either. Okay. I wish I would have known the matchup. What's going on here? Galvanic Relay for 11. So it looks like they're passing the turn, which would be good if our new hand didn't stink. Come on, Echo again. Grape Shot Main Deck. So they're not playing Burning Wish, that's what this means. Okay. We're at 7. We just can't do anything. Our hand is so bad. I think the best thing we can do is just pr play Wishclaw and pray. Okay. Please don't kill me. So they're going to play a Bergy. Yep. Fisher's Bobble. We're likely dead here. Another Flame Stoker, sure. 
We are definitely not the faster combo deck in this matchup, especially when we don't know the matchup and they do. So I'm not surprised that I've lost game number one. The th now the tricky part is that if I'm even fortunate enough to win game number two, they'll be on the play for game number three. So they're the faster deck on the play for game three, and that just puts us at a disadvantage. So knowing the matchup from the get-go is just so, I mean, it's just so advantageous. I guess that's my point. They're probably gambling for the second grape shot here and then just killing me. Yep. Okay, that's the game. All right, so Veil of Summer is not great here. We can get rid of that. We also don't need Galvanic Relay. Plotsies. I mean, Relay might be better than Abrupt Decay or Besage You. I think that might actually be the case. Bring in one Besage You. Submit. Game number two, we're on the play. Unfortunately, the Mox Opal is not active here. And I don't think Relay for four is good enough either. We'll take a Mulligan. Unplayable to five. This is fine. We'll keep this. Get rid of the Opal and Brainstorm. As far as fives go, this isn't bad. Thoughtsies. Just a Relay. Sure. Okay. Pass the turn. Bobble them. Flame Stoker. So they'll Chromox probably imprinting the Rite of Flame. Nope, the Grape Shot. Okay, so they have one Grape Shot in their deck for one condition. Okay. They have Rite of Flame and then two Bobble Triggers. Dark Ritual Wish Claw? Nope. We are forced to pass the turn. You might have been saying, I would have kept the Brainstorm over the Bobble. Well, the issue with that is we don't have a Fetch Land, so you're pretty likely to get Brainstorm locked. Them drawing Lion's Eye Diamond was good for them. Now they can activate the Flame Stoker. Okay. Four new cards. Lotus Petal. Relay for five. They revealed an Echo. They don't have a Lion's Eye in play. But they hit a Gamble, so they can gamble for a Diamond to hard cast. Ding! Here into the Abyss. Hold Priority. We'll make some mana. Grab the pier. Target ourselves. There's usually someone who watches all of the TES videos that comments every time that I don't cast pier saying that we should cut it. I hope they're uh, enjoying this league so far. <laughs> okay, so we've been fortunate enough to win game two. Maybe I want the decays. Maybe I'll leave one relay. All right, let's try this. Game three on the draw. Nope. They've kept seven. We'll ship this back. And doesn't really do anything. We'll go to five. Okay. Keep. Volcanic Island, Flame Stoker, Bobble, the Lotus Petal, Chrome Mox, no imprint. Chrome Mox, no imprint. Okay. Draw. Can't use that yet. Play out our diamonds and pass. Our plan here is that we're going to end step brainstorm and hope to spike a wish claw. All right, they've played another bobble. They can activate flame stoker here. Looks like that's what they're doing. Floating one mana, discarding an echo. Wow. Right of flame. Bergy. Don't have lion's eye diamond, please. Okay. So we get a window here. Mom, brainstorm, pretty please. I mean, in theory, I could untap and brainstorm and get one more look, but I'd also have to draw a mana. Maybe that's the move. All right. Draw. Draw for turn. We did it. Whoa. Okay. Play the Besage you because it doesn't make us lose life. Wish Claw. And now we'll go get Ad Nauseam. We have one relay, one echo in the deck. We just need zeros. Okay, so I'm dead if I flip Echo now. This could have been a Chrome Mox, but we're playing Bobble today. Come on, deck, pretty please. We've played our land. I just need a Mox Opal. We're up to Cam at two. This is it. Come on, please. Lotus Petal. We have four Petal, four Opal. We've already drawn 18 cards, have not revealed one of either. We've played a land. 
I just want to make sure that I have to flip here, and I believe I do. Mox Opal, we've done it. This room is two. Uh, actually, is that enough? I need a count here. They have a right of flame in their graveyard, so our right of flames make extra. One, two, three, four, five, so that's seven. I can burn it. Yeah, this does it. We'll stop. We were not punished by lack of chrome mocks. Almost. Right of flame makes three. Right of flame makes four. So we can. Oh, actually, we didn't need a double burning wish. I mean, we can. We'll just do it for funsies. Grab the echo. And then on this one, just in case we could prove that we could deal 20 if we needed to. Target them. Wow, what a match. That's it. We just defeated the faster storm deck with the bobbleless. Chromox, we didn't need you. We had it the whole time. Casual draw 19, the last card being the initial mana source. Whew. All right, two and all, three matches left. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting your own magic events with features such as easy to create event registration for four player and one on one Swiss based games. Event management has never been so simple and it's done on the web, no downloads are required. You can sign up for $5 by visiting eminence.events slash subscribe. Round three, we're on the draw, we'll keep. I faced our opponent last week and they were on Cephalid Breakfast. I don't know if that's what they're still playing, but I'm not going to mulligan this hand in almost any matchup. Basic Island. Okay. Another Brainstorm. I'm going to bobble now because I'm likely going to brainstorm on their end step. We reveal a step through, so they are still in fact on Cephalid Breakfast. Draw off the bobble. Meyer. I mean, that's not bad. We have to respect their ability to win on turn three. Grab Underground C. Brainstorm. That was good. Me grabbing Underground Sea actually kind of not the best choice at the moment. That probably should have been a volcanic. But let's see if we can start a Veil of Summer fight. Cast the Veil off of Taiga. They play Brainstorm in response. Okay. Big fan. Veil of Summer. They're fetching in response. They grab Underground Sea and it resolves. Okay. So I've already played my land. I can try to brainstorm to convert some of these cards into value or something even greater. And I think that's my plan here. Cast the brainstorm. So we made up for it because we drew an opal, so it's a break even. We'll put back the other veil. Unfortunately, I believe we're short of lethal. Right of Flame is Storm 7, Burning Wish is 8, Tendrils would be 9. So I could play and activate Wish Claw, but that's not going to do it. So I think we have to spin the wheel on Echo here. And hope that our opponent's new hand doesn't kill me. Alright, spin. So I could relay for a lot here. But I'd be giving our opponent a tutor, but they're unlikely to kill me using the tutor. So I think it's still the correct line. Wish Claw Talisman. Sacrifice the Diamond for Red. Activate Wish Claw. Grab Galvanic Relay. We'll cast it 14 cards. In their upkeep, we'll use Bobble. Brainstorm is the reveal. Okay, please don't kill me. Two mana. There's the Illusionist. Now they're activating the Claw? This is strange. They've played their land. Are they just getting forcible and passing? That appears to be the goal. Draw for turn. We'll play the land from exile. Play Lotus Petal. Actually, not a whole lot of mana in there in general. Tap the opal for a green. We'll play another opal. Tap this opal for a blue. And then we'll play another opal. One thing that was also pointed about pointed out was that Chrome Mox after a relay was often like not great because you actually don't have a whole lot of cards left in hand to imprint which is a pretty interesting uh, point someone made to me. The extra Veil was huge here. Play the Diamond. Cast Veil of Summer. We're in a counter war. We'll fetch. Grab the Bayou. I will cast another Veil of Summer. Our opponent with five cards in hand. They Daze. I will pay for Daze gladly. 
Veil the Summer back on the stack, it resolves, and from here it's just an easy peasy win. The fourth Opal? No way. What are the odds? Alright, Storm is 12. We'll tap this for a red. Sacrifice this for black. Cast our Burning Wish. Getting away with murder here. Tundra's of Agony targeting you. Now we just have to get one of the post board games. Sweet. Goodbye, Galvana Relay. We'll bring in Thoughtseize. And then Abrupt Decay. Pour out one bobble. So it's either two bobbles or it's one bobble, one Mishra's bobble. I think I'm going to board out the fourth opal. You don't really need to bring in Besaju in this matchup. It only hit Shuko or like an Urza's Saga, and I don't think that's necessarily what this matchup is actually about. Game two on the draw. I don't love this hand, but I'm going to keep it. Opponent is on six cards. Turn one Tundra into Nomads. Okay. So they might be going for a fast kill here. Look at their top card. It's a Tundra. Grab the land that enables us to possibly cast Abrupt Decay if we need to, and we draw it. Definitely getting rid of that Illusionist. Downside, they have Cabal Therapy. And we have double Wishclaw Talisman. They play a Ponder. I accidentally crossed off Tundra. There's still a Tundra in their hand. They do not shuffle. They played the Tundra, so they can't therapy me now. But them not shuffling gives me a strong, hey, I have the win next turn vibes. We can't cast the Abrupt Decay unless I draw it and draw like a Lotus Petal or an Opal. We'll cast the Brainstorm. So I could Echo here. But then if they have anything, I'm kind of screwed. Let's Bobble. See what they get left on top. Okay, well, they have the win, so we're definitely going to echo. Right of Flame. Lion's Eye Diamond. Burning Wish. Yes. Grab the Echo, and we'll spin. Storm is six. So your Ponder was Fluster Storm and Illusionist. I was never going to beat that. Okay, next game. That was brutal. Try that again. Game three, we're on the play. This hand is okay. We're a little bit short on mana, but I'm going to keep. We need to draw like land two and a lotus petal. Play the diamond. Play bobble. Pass the turn. Looted delta. They grab underground sea. This therapy could be backbreaking if they name burning wish. And they do. Ah. Oh. So brutal. Yep. That hurt. Not loving my odds. They reveal a Scalding Tarn. We'll draw a card. There's the Lotus Petal we needed. A little bit late. Thoughtseize. Quite the hand. I think, and I could be wrong here, that you're supposed to take the step through and just slow the game down. They use the Scalding Tarn immediately. For a Narc Amoeba. Am I supposed to burn the veil here? I think I'm going to. Good draw. Land. Lotus Petal. So I'd be trading two for two here if they decide to force will this. Okay. They force pitching Fluster. So they kept one force in hand. And they rip Stoneforge Mystic. Wow. They grab Shuko. So all they need now is Illusionist. We have to pass. They draw Saga. No blue card, but I can't do anything right now. They swing, we'll go to 16. Draw for turn. Can't cast that, we have to pass. They swing two. I mean, I'm going to die to the Saga very quickly. There's no Tropical Island for me to grab for this Veil of Summer, which is very awkward. They're going to make another Construct. Grab the Volcanic. So... They're attacking for seven, which means they have lethal next turn. So I need to brainstorm into an action spell and a green source. I think I'm supposed to brainstorm on the end step because I'm choked on mana. Cast it. That's not likely good enough. Okay. Thought sees you. Take the daze. Dark ritual. 
I'm not really even really sure what my outs are here. I think it's Echo. So I, if it's Echo, I don't think I'm supposed to crack the diamonds. I could crack for red, but Burning Wish doesn't actually do anything other than get me empty. And I don't see myself beating this with an empty the Warrens for 10. I think I just have to pray to brainstorm into Echo here. Technically an Echo, but it's an Echo with no mana floating. With lethal on board, and I've played a land. Versus a deck with Force of Will, Daze, Force of Negation. Not likely to win in this spot. We need a Miracle draw 7. Spin. Firm is 5. That's not going to do it. Okay, we have lost the Cephalid Breakfast, unfortunately. We are now 2 and 1. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. All right, let's bounce back after that tough loss. We're facing Martin Medmitten, who is really known for bonus round Ruby Storm. I don't know what they've been playing nowadays, but I think I like this hand. We'll keep it. All right, well, this is definitely not bonus round Ruby Storm. Pitch is Kaya. Are we facing, like, the red-white legacy scam deck here? Did I say red-white? Black-white. Ignore me. I'm tired. Okay, they play a pair of bobbles after the grief and pass. So wish claw down, and then we draw into Veil of Summer. Okay. We'll keep the Veil of Summer up in case they try to reanimate the grief. We reveal Brainstorm. Okay, now they're passing. We'll bobble them. Cruder of the Guard. Okay, so we're going to draw off the Urza's bobble and then draw off her turn. Another Brainstorm. Diamond is a good one. Let's fetch. Grab Underground Sea. Cast the Brainstorm. That was a very good Brainstorm. That is enough to put Ad Nauseam on the stack. We'll put back the pair of ones. We don't want the Galvanic Relay in the deck for when we're trying to cast Ad Nauseam. So that is why we're not putting it back. We do have a land drop here, which is pretty important. Okay. This would be a spot where we could have imprinted the Galvanic Relay. Hopefully that ends up not mattering. Activate the Wish Claw. Cast Ad Nauseum. One Echo, two Relays in the deck. We do have a land drop, as I mentioned. Looks like it's not likely going to matter. Maybe I shouldn't open up my mouth yet. Okay, so if I stop here, Rite of Flame makes two Dark Ritual off of Lotus Petal. This should do it. We'll stop here. So the reason to stop is in case I flip an echo, I go to one. And I don't really want to go to one for no reason. Okay. Dark Ritual. Play the Opal. Cast the Rite of Flame. And our opponent concedes. We have taken game number one. I think we likely want the Abrupt Decays in this matchup. They answer opposition agents or other things. We want to leave in the Veil of Summers. I actually don't hate Relay in the matchup but I'm struggling with what to possibly take out. I think I'm going to skim one relay and the third opal, or I'm sorry, the third bobble and call it. I do like Veil of Summer versus the Grief Duck. I don't really want to board that out. Good hand. Keep. Turn one Scrubland. Five cards. There's the Grief again. Pitching Beckon Apparition. This makes a 1-1 one, one Spirit and exiles a card from a graveyard. They take Brainstorm. Deafening Silence. I did not board in the Besages because I didn't think their deck had this. So we're drawing towards one of our two copies of Abrupt Decay. We'll pass. Looks like they kept that hand on the back of Scrubland. Okay. Cast a Burning Wish. Grab Echo. Pass the turn. Another Deafening Silence. Now I need both copies of Abrupt Decay. That's annoying. That is very, very obnoxious. Cast Burning Wish. We'll grab Empty. So one of the reasons I'm taking this line isn't because I think two goblins is going to go the distance versus Deafening Silence. I didn't board in a win condition. And if they happen to go discard Spell Surgical, I don't want to lose to that. 
Another grief. Interesting that they pitched the Beckon Apparition because they could take the Echo and then exile it, and they didn't want to do that. And here they have Ephemerate. Okay. They take Right of Flame. They have one card in hand. We draw another Right of Flame. We'll play out the Lotus Petal. For game three, I'm definitely going to want the Besajus. They chose to not flicker using the Ephemerate Needle. So I could fetch here, I'm not going to. If they want to name Meyer, that leaves my Wish Claws open. And they do name the Wish Claw. Okay. Bobble. Just gonna use it now. If we don't need that, we'll fetch. Pass the turn. Dark Ritual. The Foretold a card. Wonder what that could be. I honestly don't know. We drew another Mishra's Bobble. I'm just gonna use that now. Hoping to find one Abrupt Decay and then spin the wheel into another. And then, I mean, that's realistically how we're going to win this game. Not boarding in the Besagers really bit me in the butt. Cosmic Intervention. What does that do? If a permanent you control would be put into the graveyard this turn, exile it and said, return it to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, so they get to destroy two of my lands with Wasteland. Okay, so they're a Cosmic Intervention deck. Interesting. Okay, there's an Abrupt Decay, step one. I think I'm going to just, just um, I can't, my bad. Not allowed to do that. I've already played the Opal. What, it's coming back again? That doesn't make any sense to me. This card, I don't get it. Okay, so they'll attack for three. I go to nine. Odds are not looking so good. We will abrupt decay one of the deafening silences. And then draw. Okay. We'll go to game three. I mean, I could have echoed there. I just don't think we're going to win. Sorry, I got a little defeated. I could have continued to grind that out. I just don't think it's necessarily worthwhile. We'll bring in the, the Thought Seizes, knowing what our opponent's game plan is now. Get rid of the Relays. I'm going to shave two Veil of Summer in the third Opal. This seems fine. We'll keep. One has seven cards. I think we're just going to spin the wheel on Echo. Right of Flame. Burning Wish. Grab the Echo. We're giving them a Force to Mulligan here. And we're going to start up... Plus a card due to the bobble and a land. Spin that wheel. Okay. In their upkeep, we will Mishra's bobble them. They're drawing a scrub land and then Urza's bobble. They have Mindbreak Trap. Wow. Okay. I wouldn't have expected that. It's a good one to know about, that's for sure. Wasteland. Okay. Draw. Mm, I messed this up. I was supposed to play the Scalding Turn. Because the Scalding Turn can't get Taiga, and now I'm forced to discard if I don't cast something. So I'm like, forced to brainstorm, and then this doesn't get the Bayou. Yeah, I really just punted there. That was decent. We'll hide Burning Wish, and Wish Claw. Diamond is spell number two. They play the Scrubland. Ball Therapy, you got it. They named Dark Ritual and they hit. So we should be drawing the other Wish Claw. Play this. Maybe I should have fetched there. Because now we're drawing the Burning Wish, and if my plan's to add Nauseam, I'm putting a Burning Wish to the graveyard, and I don't really like that. Yeah, I'm not playing well right now. Another Wasteland, so that means that I'm probably not going to go for it this turn anyway. The... Use the Apparition. This makes a token so they can flash back the Cabal Therapy. And Wasteland me here. They take my Rite of Flame. Plus Wasteland. Sure. So we're going to draw the Burning Wish. They have five in hand. So one of the few ways we lose this game, in my opinion, is the Surgical on Burning Wish. So I'm going to just play it nice and slow. I'm just going to go get Massacre. So if for some reason they played... A Dothy Voidwalker, an Other Sworn Canonist, something else I could massacre it. Urza's Saga, sure. 
Necrogen spell bomb. Zurin orb. Okay. The spell bomb letting or the bobble letting us know that they have a mind break was so huge. Another push claw. Okay. Grab the ad nauseum, which will be spell number one. Abrupt decay. I'll pop this out. People like it when I do that. Wrong one? Here we go. And then we'll clear some of this stuff. We're at 13. Thought seize was a good one. All right, well, I didn't need three of them. We need more mana here. That's actually our choke point. There's a land. I've played the Bayou this turn, though. Bright of Flame is fine. So if I keep flipping and then flip the Echo, I can't Thought see, so we're supposed to stop here. Does this win, though? Okay, so... We have three starting mana sources. One of them has to cast Thought Seize. So we might as well just call it two. And then from there, three, three is six, nine. Wish Claw into Burning Wish into Tendrils is nine mana. I think that this is enough. But if they have another Beckon Apparition, I'm actually short one. I'm going to flip again. That does it. Okay, Lotus Petal. Actually, I'll play another pedal so I don't lose to uh, Surgical. And if they want to Mind Break this, then I don't have to... I mean, I could still cast the Thought Seize. Cast the Thought Seize. Okay. Coast is clear. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. We'll play the Diamond. It's worth noting, they can gain 4 life using these, so we don't want to forget about that. Right of Flame. Versus Bobble. Wish Claw Talisman. Discard our hand. Activate Burning Wish. So their opponent does have one out here. And that's they could draw a card using Spell Bomb and hit exactly another copy of Mindbury Trap. There's nothing I could have done about that. Okay. I want to know. All right. Enjoy your scrub land. I think I would have cried if that was a mind break trap. Three and one. Okay, we're doing okay. Let's just head up, play well, better than this, because I didn't play that well this round. Uh, play better than this, and let's win match number five. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match, our opponent's most recent results are Bant Zenith, not Yorian, just 60 card natural order Bant Zenith. I don't think we're allowed to keep this. We're going to ship it. Turn one relay. Okay, you convinced me. Would I rather have a Burning Wish in hand or the extra card? I think I'm going to choose the extra card. Their list did have two main deck copies of Fluster Storm, but no um, Force of Will effects. Land was good. Okay. Right of Flame. What you doing over there, huh? Thinking about this Right of Flame? You gonna counter it? Gonna counter it real good? Huh? Just a, an innocent Right of Flame looking to live its best life. You don't want to interact with this card. What has Right of Flame ever done to you? Okay, we'll play a Mox Opal. We do have to lose our Lotus Petal for this play. Grab Underground C. Galvanic Relay for seven. Glad I bought him the Burning Wish. Dark Ritual. Ooh, that's a good one. That was a very good relay. The question is, do I keep the Bobble around? I think I'm going to use it. Prismatic Ending. So this is not the Zenith deck, I don't think. I think that this is just like Just Guy Control. They removed my opal. I'm fine with that. So since the banning, I am 10 and 4 versus Just Guy Control. And as of last night, I am 20 and 4 against Delver Variants. I've been doing well. If you're a fair blue deck, I'm usually quite favored. All right, they have four cards in hand. Let's try the Wish Claw. Bright of Flame. 
Uh, attempt to veil summer. Everything is resolved. Storm is six. So I could use Wish Claw, which would be Storm seven. Burning Wish, Tendrils, that doesn't work. I can guarantee appear into the Abyss, so we're just going to do that. Blindside Diamond. Also, Galvanic Relay. What a card. What a card. Burning Wish. Oh, I actually just have Lethal here. That's so boring. So, I have Relay into Tendrils. I mean, it's boring, but it, it does win the game. The one downside here. Hear me out. The one downside. My opponent has Solitude into Swords to Plowshares. That, that could be a thing. I mean, I doubt that our opponent's playing Solitude, but it's a hypothetical way that they could live and untap. That said, I would get to then use my brand new cards off of the Galvanic Relay. We have one game number one versus Jeskai Control. Sideboarding. We take out the Echo, we bring in the Ave. And I, I've gone back and forth on whether or not you even board in the Abrupt Decays or the Besages, because if they're on the Matthew Vuk list that won the challenge, they just don't have anything that these cards are good against. So sometimes I'm like, do I even bother? Um, I think it's like sort of free to bring in the Besages, because land drops are just good against the control decks. So I'm down to board out one Opal and one Bobble, plus like extra green sources for Ave is kind of nice as well, but you don't actually have to do anything here. Game two on the draw. I'll keep this. We do need the Brainstorm to resolve, which means playing around Pyroblast and minor misstep, but we should have an opening. Going with the Mulligan to six. One thing that I love about the Epic Storm is that you can play to the speed of the matchup. And against Fast Decks, you can Mulligan into turn one Echoes that, you know, maybe have a relay after or turn one kill or turn one Ad Nauseam. But against the Blue Decks, you get to outgrind them with Galvanic Relays in a slow game too. And if you go fast in game one, they often feel pressured to mulligan into a, a turn one counter spell in game two. And then you're gaining an advantage that way when you're really just looking to outgrind them. And when we first started testing this list, it was the week after Matthew Vuk's victory on Jeskai Control. And the leagues were full of the deck. Like, I had never faced Jeskai Control until then. And this is my 15th match versus the deck in two weeks. So it tells you how saturated the leagues are with it and yeah i mean it's just everywhere so i forget the point that i was trying to make here <laughs> um but like you can just like outgrind them with relays over and over again and that's sort of the nice thing about the deck oh i remember now so my average combo turn was actually super high when we first started testing this list it was like 5.6 and my average combo turn now has dropped down to like 3.7, 3.8, because I was playing at a slower pace in all those matches because I was just facing control decks over and over again. And you don't have to be the turbo deck every game is my message here. You can just, you know, be patient and get them when it, your time is right. All right, they can't minor misstep or pyroblast. Decent. It doesn't have a protection spell. And it might seem odd, but I'm going to fetch now and then bobble immediately. And the reason why is that it gets us through Narset. The bobbles are not stopped by Narset, unlike Preordained or Ponder. And it's just kind of nice. They have a forest on top. So they're actually not Jeskai. We'll pass. Draw a card off the bobble. It's another Rite of Flame. Speaking of the devil, there she is. Force of Will. Okay. We have five cards. Dark Ritual. I'm going to try to get them to counterspell some mana here. In their hand, we know that they, out of the five cards, they have Basic Forest, Force of Will. They have Force of Will pitching to Fury Time Raveler. I'm trying to sell them on... We have a Progenitor Ooze. So do you force the right... Or, I'm sorry, trying to sell them on... We have uh, Galvanic Relay. So I want them to force the mana if they have any interaction. That's the game plan here, and they did. They like completely ate the bait. So now they have basic forest in hand and a Narset in play. They're using Narset. Deafening silence. Wow, what a find. That's quite brutal. I did board in two copies of Besaju, so we're not cold. I have to pass the turn. The Fury Time Raveler that buys them a whole turn cycle by bouncing my Wish Claw. 
Okay. Play the claw again. Ice Fang Quaddle was their last card in hand. Okay, plus Teferi. Two cards remain. The problem that I'm having is that I need more mana if I'm going to answer the Deafening Silence and win in one spot. Stony Silence. Now we need double Besage you. All right, I've lost this one. We're going to go to game three. Bring in Abrupt Decays. Actually, I'm going to bring in two Thoughtsies as well. All right. Call me crazy, I'm boarding out Brainstorm. I think it's the right move in this matchup. Game three on the play. Wow, very good hand. Keep. Our opponent has kept a six card hand. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. Mox Opal. Thought Seas. Take the Force of Will. Play the Besage you. Pass the turn. They use Misty. And a ponder, sure thing. So what we want to draw is another black source, because that would give us a protected win. So a land, a lotus petal, another opal, dark ritual. They did not shuffle on the ponder. All right, let's see what their top card is. Prismatic ending. So that's actually not good for us. So we either have to jam in right now or lose a diamond, and then I can't add nauseam next turn. And if they... Hit my opal, I can't even cast the wish claw unless I draw into a black source. I'm going to choose not to jam into force. And they did have a force in hand. Okay, so I need to draw a black source, assuming that they hit the opal. There it is. Savannah. And they did go after the opal. Okay, so it's brainstorm into force versus my ad nauseum. We'll fetch to 15. Grab Badlands. Wishclaw Talisman. Brainstorm. Wishclaw. So I don't even actually have to... Um, I could just Ave here. Ave doesn't lose to another force. It wouldn't be for lethal. So if I Ave, it would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 14. So I could rotate for another Wishclaw, but if they force the Wishclaw... I think I'm going to rotate for another Wish Claw. Play it. They let the first one resolve. Activate. Eve Progenitor Ooze. It's slime time. They fetch to 18. Narset doesn't save you here. Okay, so they finally tapped an island and they are activating Wish Claw Talisman. And they concede, so we got the 4 1. How about that? Okay, so we lost to Staffled Breakfast, which is admittedly a terrible matchup that I've been trying to solve. But unfortunately, I think our deck beats pretty much everything in the metagame other than Doomsday and Staffled Breakfast. It's worth mentioning, I've actually been doing quite well versus 8-cast after the switch to Abrupt Decay and Besage you. I'm actually above 50% at the moment when the matchup used to be... 30 to 25 percent somewhere in that ballpark so the fact that we have four answers to chalice now that are uncounterable is just terrific so highly recommend this package let me know what you think in the comment section down below i hope you enjoyed the video and uh before i leave let's open up our chest see if we get anything cool the five color omnath from march of the machines pretty cool uh lavinia i mean technically i play that in vintage the rest of these cards stink uh, Fractured Sanity, I guess he's play in Modern Mill, but I don't think that's worth anything. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day. Keep storming, and let me know how you do with 7 Bobble TES. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.